Okay, I'd like to first start off by thanking um, the CILO uh, organization for the invitation to come down and speak to you. I've had a really nice time in Sao Paulo. Um, I've learned a tremendous amount uh, at this conference about how you're doing things in, in, uh, in Latin America. And uh, a lot of the issues and themes that have been expressed here are very similar to, to the, uh, the challenges that we face in, in, in Canada. So um, I'm going to, there we go. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, history of the NRC Research Press journals, um, our transition from being a government organization to a not-for-profit uh, organization. Um, I'll talk about uh, how we're trying to increase our profile uh, within the international community and the challenges and, and uh, opportunities we've had in, in trying to do that. Um, first, a little bit about the history. Um, we are, uh, were a part of the National Research Council of Canada. Uh, this was a federal, this was a part of the federal government of Canada, uh, or still is a part of the federal government of Canada. Um, it has about 4,000 employees uh, in research laboratories across the country. Um, the National Research Council of Canada in 1929 fired up the first journal, so that's about 90, 90 years ago. Um, and uh, re re we remained a, a, a unit within the National Research Council um, uh, until 2009, uh, but in 1994 we were absorbed into the National Science Library of, of Canada, which is also a part of the um, uh, National Research Council of Canada. So, um, in 2009, and this is a significant date, and I'll explain why, um, our organization had 17 uh, uh, journals of its own, 10 client journals that we published for Monograph Program. We were very much a part of the federal government of Canada and all of the rules and, and policies and, uh, and the production and all of those things went on within the, the framework of a, of a government organ organization. I might add um, that uh, the other science journals in Canada there's about a half dozen significant science journals that sit on OGS platforms provided by the universities in Canada. The remaining journals in Canada are published by the scientific societies within Canada um, under various business models. Um, in a, in a, um, a market research study that was done a couple years ago, about 85% of the downloads coming from Canadian journals were in fact coming from the NRC research press journals. So we, we have a significant share of the, of the Canadian market. Now, as a national publisher, we had certain advantages. Um, we could claim to be uh, the Canadian voice uh, for Canadian science. We had significant research community support, university support in terms of all the volunteers. Um, we certainly knew what the research community looked like in Canada, uh, and we had a, a trusted brand uh, with the National Research Council of Canada. The, uh, but there were challenges to being a national, uh, a national publisher. One, we had a long history, and that makes it difficult to change internally, but it also makes it difficult for people outside to accept the change. We had uh, the brand, uh, many of our journals, with Canadian Journal of Botany, Zoology, Physics, uh, I could go on. Um, that term Canadian um, uh, signaled to people that maybe we only published Canadian research when in fact we publish a great deal of international research. Certainly uh, we had limited international distribution. Uh, Canada faces an onslaught of the large commercial publishers uh, coming into Canada and uh, scooping up the better quality Canadian science journals. Uh, one in particular, Taylor and Francis, um, has, has been advertising that they, they are going to have a Canadian portal. And so they're, they're moving across the country, sort of picking the best fruit from, from, from the tree. Okay, 2009, a meteor hit. 
for us. And the federal government of Canada decided it no longer wanted to be in the uh, publishing uh, business. Um, we have a very conservative government in Canada, um, and uh, uh, publishing journals was just not part of their, their ideology. So we, it, it was announced, uh, actually they gave the council, they gave the council three choices. Um, spin off the journals into a company, sell it, which meant the, the journals would have gone to a, probably a large commercial publisher, or, or, uh, or terminate it, you know, close the doors on it. Um, so uh, a group of uh, the employees decided to spin the journal operation into a, a not-for-profit company, retaining uh, essentially the, the old mandate and mission of the, of, of the organization. So as a result, uh, in 2010, we had a lot of work to do. Um, we had to incorporate ourselves as a not-for-profit. At that point, we investigated um, uh, trying to develop a new business model. We had been open access in Canada uh, because we were a government organization, but we did have subscription, uh, um, uh, subscriptions for uh, international uh, clients. Uh, we did investigate at that point going full OA, but uh, I'll have to be honest, our very conservative government has reduced uh, funding considerably for Canadian journals, Canadian science journals, and Canadian OA journals. It's a very tough scene in Canada. Uh, it, I come down here and it looks much better actually in that, in, in that sense. Um, we had to build a whole new infrastructure of, of systems. Um, we had to re re reallocate and reorganize our, our resources uh, and really develop a new, uh, a new culture. So who are we now? Well, we're still the, the, the largest by far science publisher in, in Canada. Uh, we're still a national not-for-profit uh, publisher. Um, we are, are, are moving towards supporting the dissemination of Canadian research, quality Canadian research and international research to uh, international research communities. And we're leveraging um, our international presence to support Canadian science publishing activities. One of the exercises we had to do uh, fairly quickly off the bat as, a, as the government voted us off the island um, was to establish a new corporate identity. Um, and so we chose to uh, try to leverage our, our uh, legacy. We retained the NRC Research Press brand we essentially got that agreement out of the federal government. Um, and then we sought a new logo. And in seeking the new logo, we, we, we told our design people, we want something that looks Canadian to Canadians, but looks something else outside Canada. And so if you look at that arrow, most of you would see that as an arrow. Most Canadians would see it as part of the, ma uh, the maple leaf on the Canadian uh, flag. So we, we tried to have it both ways. I think it's working. Okay, number one, the thing that, that the first thing we did out of the gate was we set up, a, established a content development uh, uh, program and re resourced that. It's a, it's a group within the organization. And within that, what we sought to do was increase the quality of the science that was, uh, that was in our, our, our journals, the reputation of the journals uh, uh, around the world. And so, um, uh, we have a group. It works directly with the editors of each one of our journals. It develops strategic plans for each one of our journals. And the strategic plans uh, do a, you know, if I, if I look, at, look at them, they do a comparative analysis of each of the journals with the other sort of journals in, in, in the world. Uh, they look at the scope. Is there areas that, that uh, uh, are not being covered by the journals or, or should not be covered by the journals? Um, they look at the editorial boards of the, of the journals um, and they say, um, uh, does the editorial, do, do the associate editors on the editorial boards uh, line up with the areas, subject areas that they want to represent? Um, and there's also been a push to internationalize those, those uh, uh, editorial boards. 
Um, it, you know, the uh, strategic plan looks into the geographic, um, does a, an analysis of the submissions um, and, and what's been published in the journals, uh, and things like the time to publication. All of those aspects of the journals, it's all put into one plan, and then we allocate resources and, and tools to support the plan. We work very closely with the editors. The editors, as many of you are editors, are, acad are academics, and uh, this is uh, a part-time job. You know, your full-time job may be teaching or, or research. So we work closely with the, with the editors, and we provide them with a lot of support. So we really do manage uh, uh, the, 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 the quality, the development of the quality and the reputation of, of, of the journal. That is the most important thing we have done to date. Other things we've, we have done is we've gone out and ensured that we meet all of the international standards that, that are expected of quality international journals. It's, you know, from the platform to the linkages that you have to make, DOI, uh, cross-ref, cross-check, all of the other ones that are, that are, are, are coming out. We train our, our copy editors, um, the uh, Council of Science editors, uh, we're a member of, SC of COPE, um, which looks at the whole issues of, of research publishing. We look at where, where we should archive our journals. We've also had a major push um, to, uh, um, uh, open the open uh, to open much more of our content. Um, and, and we've changed our, our licensing regimes as, uh, as a result of that. So we really do keep an eye on what's needed in the international market, and we bring that on board as, as soon as we can. Um, and then um, we've looked at uh, part of the strategy is to ensure that, that we receive as many high-quality international uh, uh, submissions as, as, as we can. And so uh, we put a lot of effort into sort of increasing our reach. Um, the other aspect of in increasing our reach is we still maintain the, the uh, uh, subscription model for international journals. Um, and so we've set up uh, 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 agents across, across, the, uh, across, across the world. I mean, well, one of them I think is a uh, is a sponsor here, Charlesworth, um, has represented us in China. And as a result of that, we've seen our, 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 the usage of our journals increase dramatically in, in, in China, as well as the quality of the submissions coming in from China has, has increased dramatically. But uh, we've also done other things. Um, we've uh, looked at our instructions to authors, for example, and translated those into uh, languages that we think are, are significant uh, in terms of the research communities uh, around the world. Again, this is reaching out. Uh, we are much more engaged uh, in the communi research communities around the world. We send our editors out. We uh, may do some sponsorship if we, if we have the resources. And so um, we are trying to develop a higher profile for our journals around the world through, through doing these sorts of things. Um, something we couldn't do under the very restrictive guidelines, you can tell I don't like my government, um, under the very restrictive guidelines of the, of the government was uh, we set up, uh, really went into social media um, with Facebook pages and, and, and Twitter and our own science rev review. Uh, all of these work in the Canadian market very well um, and, and they, um, they also have, have no boundaries. And in fact, if you look at this diagram, the, the pie chart, you'll see a purple section. Not small, not big, but those are, those are Brazilians who are accessing our, our Facebook page. So uh, this is uh, raising our, our profile abroad. We've also begun a program, which we couldn't under the federal government, um, uh, reaching out to mainstream media and uh, press press releases and, and an outreach to journalists. And this has been very successful for us. Um, recently when Science published that article, um, the Sting article that we all know about, um, the first thing the journalists did in Canada was they contacted us. And so, you know, I gave my comments 
And then that went all across the country. So that, again, raised the profile of, of the journals with Canadians. Many of our, many of our research papers have been uh, uh, referenced, articles have been written. Uh, these are some of the places where they've showed up. Um, last night, uh, we, <laughs> we issued a communique. It doesn't have much application in Brazil, but it was about coyotes being able to kill mooses in Canada. And uh, that really appealed to the Canadians. And, and so again, the journal, the, 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 uh, the authors, uh, it was uh, re repeated, that article was repeated across Canada. So very good from, from a Canadian perspective. Now all of this uh, we did on a, trying to raise our profile and the quality of our journals, managing the quality of our journals. But we also looked at um, what do you do at home? Because we, we still consider ourselves you know, a national publisher, a Canadian national publisher. Well, we certainly leveraged what we've been doing internationally and, and, and brought back that, that expertise. And so we've increased our support to Canadian societies, uh, Canadian research societies. Many of them are affiliated directly with our, with our journals. Um, we've increased the support for uh, science dissemination. Um, a group of science bloggers in Canada uh, came to us and said we would like to develop a, a blog, a, a Canadian science blog of Canadian science blogs. And so we provided them with the resources and the expertise to put, to, to put that together. We've certainly been supporting the Canadian community um, through uh, seminars and, and conferences and, and symposia and supporting them in the organizing of those. Um, and then we've uh, developed partnerships uh, um, uh, within Canada to the other significant uh, uh, organizations. And we've sort of been able to forge a community of those organizations across Canada, which has been quite successful in, in supporting sci uh, science dissemination in Canada. Um, there's probably a whole um, presentation I could do on developing an in, uh, a culture of risk and innovation. We were bureaucrats. We did come across into a what had to be a much more innovative and, and almost entrepreneurial uh, 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 situation. And this really shook up uh, the mindset of, of, of our employees. And uh, some could handle it, and, and, and some unfortunately, luckily not many, could not, unfo could not handle it, and uh, they, they left the organization. But the things that we try and strive for within the organization are continuous change and, and improvement. As the executive director, uh, you know, I am constantly pushing the organization into new areas and uh, uh, new uncomfortable zones. Uh, and and uh, so we've uh, had to, within our staff, um, who are very sort of precision-oriented people, we, we've had to uh, de uh, you know, develop a sense of it's okay if, it's, if the situation is ambiguous. And it's okay to take risks. Uh, recently, uh, one of our staff launched an initiative, and it failed. It totally failed. But we, we celebrated that because it was worth doing. It was a risk. So uh, we, we have... Uh, uh, manage this culture change within the organization. That's probably the thing that will take the longest for us to, to, to accomplish, but it's, 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 it's getting there. So that's it. Thank you very much.